Welcome to this video. Today we'll be going over Magnus' uh, openings using some statistics. So I have taken all his classical, rapid and blitz games, excluded some title Tuesdays and title arenas, so we'll mainly get official games, and ended up with more than 4,600 games. And as you can see, he has played a bit more games with the white pieces than the black pieces. Let's now look at Magnus's first move with white. He usually plays pawn to e4 in 45% of the games. A close contender is pawn to d4 with 34% of the games. And it was a bit surprising to me because I thought he played uh, c4 and knight f3 uh, more than he's doing. But it only ended up being 17% of the time combined. Uh, and this also showcases that Magnus believes that these four main moves in chess are also probably the best ones. What is interesting is that when you look more at his results, pawn to e4 is actually not the best scoring move for him. He plays uh, even better, at least he scores better with pawn to d4 uh, in these statistics. And maybe it has something to do with he's quite a positional player, I'm not sure. Uh, there is like some old saying that maybe d4 is a bit more positional. I'm not sure it's correct. Um, but at least d4 and c4, he scores even better than pawn to e4. So maybe uh, Magnus should watch this video and start playing these moves even further. Let's now take a look at what Magnus' opponents play after Carlsen plays pawn to e4. So as you can see, in 43% of the games, his opponents respond with e5, and another 40% with the Sicilian. So basically, 83% 83, 83 of the time, his opponents play either the Sicilian or e5. And that's also a bit surprising to me, because you would think that openings like the Cao Khan and the Fringe, which is also considered quite main openings, uh, would happen more often. But it seems that when you play against Magnus, you always choose what you believe is the best. And I know most super grandmasters, they mainly believe in pawn to e5 and c5 as the best uh, theoretical replies to e4. But still that uh, Karakhan and Fringe only happen uh, in 12% of the games was a bit surprising to me. So let's look a bit deeper now. I've been looking now at e4, e5 and knight to f3. And here, Magnus's opponents, they usually play knight c6 in 87% of the games. And they only choose the Petrov in 13% of the games. And that is probably not because they, they don't like the Petrov, but just that knight c6 is just the, one of the main uh, openings of chess. And the Petrov uh, only rose to popularity a bit later. Uh, than knight to c6. So after knight to c6, uh, as you can see, Magnus is really a big fan of the Spanish. He plays it in 73% of the games. And that's a huge margin. Because I looked at some of the other top players, and many of them, they play the Real Lopez and the Italian almost equally. But that's not the case with Magnus. He's such a big fan of the Spanish. And it has to be said, he plays the Italian also uh, in almost every fifth game, 17% of the time. Uh, and sometimes he also plays the Scotch and Four Knights. Uh, but these openings, especially the Four Knights, has usually been played to play for a draw. Let's now check out what happens after the Sicilian. Here, Magnus is a big fan of Knight of Free, which is also the main move. But I was a bit surprised when I saw that it was only 2% of his games that featured a lap in defense. Because I saw him play a lot of games when he needed to make a draw to clinch a tournament victory where he would play the lap in. But I think I only had like 8 games or so uh, with C3 here. Uh, which is uh, not much uh, to say the least. Um, but maybe Magnus just been winning the tournament before he needed to make a draw in many cases. Let's now see what Magnus plays after pawn to d6, which is usually an invitation for the knight off. 
Usually Magnus accepts and plays pawn to d4, playing the open Sicilian in 66% of the time. Another 7, 27% of the games he plays the Moscow variation, bishop b5 check, so that he does more than every fourth game. And then he also tries some other moves sometimes, but usually he, he accepts to go for pawn to d4, the open Sicilian. Let's now check out what Magnus does against pawn to e6, which is usually an invitation for the Tamanov. He also most often accepts playing pawn to d4 in 57% of the games. And then he has 11% of the times, a bit surprising to me, he played the move pawn to b3. So he probably believes that this line is quite interesting for white. And then he has tried some other moves. Uh, I know there are many different moves here, like g3, also white can play now the Lapin with pawn to c3 here, um, but mainly Magnus plays pawn to d4. At last, let's take a look at what Magnus plays against knight c6, which is also one of his main moves himself with the black pieces. So he most often he goes for the Rosolimo in 39% of the games. But he has also played the open Sicilian with pawn to d4 in 36% of the time. And for 25% of the games, he's played knight to c3. So it's actually quite hard to know what will happen after knight to c6. Although uh, Rosolimo seems a bit more likely because it also seems to fit Magnus's kind of chess uh, to play a more positional game. And also, I don't really see Magnus going for the Sveshnikov all that often. So I think he mainly played pawn to d4 early in his career. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video where I've been going through some statistics of Magnus Carlsen's games. I think I will make uh, one more of these, uh, perhaps also one with the black pieces. And I hope it made you a bit wiser. So, thanks a lot for watching.